all over the Kashmir Valley are plantations of the mulberry tree. The mulberry itself is good to eat, but the leaf is far more important than the fruit, for it feeds the busiest craftsman in all Kashmir, the tiny silkworm. There are many different breeds and races of silkworm, but all of them have one thing in common. They feed only on leaves of the mulberry tree. From the moment they are born in summer, they eat without stopping, gorging themselves for several days. When they have had their fill, they purge themselves until they turn translucent. In this translucent state, they are put into racks to spin their own cocoons. The worm begins his most important task in life. From his mouth, he exudes a silken thread. Within a week, he has spun for himself a silken house to hide in. The worms have vanished, each inside his own cocoon. What has happened meantime to the silkworm inside? He is alive still, but he has changed his form completely. The worm has become a chrysalis. Left alone inside the cocoon, it will change again. In a few moth has softened the silken threads of the cocoon with fluid in order to break through. fluttering male, the plump and lazy female. The moths, male and female, are carefully picked off and sorted. Then a great mass marriage follows. The male is brought to the female. If they are left, they die. So the mating is interrupted, and the female carefully sheltered until she has laid her eggs. Thus the life cycle of the silkworm is ensured. As for the males, they each female lays from four to eight hundred eggs. The mother in bag. The moth soon dies, but the eggs stay safely for the whole winter. During the winter months, one ounce in weight of healthy eggs, called seed, is poured into a flat box covered with fine netting. Villagers willing to raise silkworms at home come to collect their free boxes of seed. Later, they will bring back cocoons, which the government will buy. Hey, boy, come, come on,